I do believe that game theory is a way of seeing the world and therefore in some sense applies to everything. Uh, how much it gives you a new insight, well, that depends on the, the circumstance. Uh, I could take one example right now, which is the, uh, the crisis we're seeing in the bailout. And people are talking about using an auction uh, as a way to buy a lot of the distressed debt. Now, auctions are great, and on eBay you can buy a Pez dispenser or a, a, a plane from the government of Alaska, perhaps. But uh, it turns out auctions work much better for selling things than for buying things. So the standard auction we think about, you've got the Pez dispenser for sale and lots of people bidding cash. In this type of auction, you have to flip things. You would have the government paying cash and buying bonds. Now, normally these are called procurement auctions or reverse auctions. The challenge is that when you're doing that, people are selling you stuff of different quality. So if you're buying a road, for example, and you take the lowest bid, well, you might put enough specifications so you think the different contractors are pretty similar. But if you said, I'll give you $50 billion, and who will give me the most bonds? The people who are going to give you those bonds are the ones with the worst ones. And so you will end up with something called the winner's curse. It'll be a disaster. And so while auctions work great for selling things, they really don't work so well for buying things when the quality isn't clear. And that's what we've got in this case. And so I'd like to think that game theory and its application to auctions could help us from really screwing up in this circumstance. Well, I would say uh, it's appreciating that uh, People uh, were thinking about a short-term game uh, and imagining that there would be a sort of continuation. Um, that, uh, so for example, homeowners, when they took these uh, mortgages uh, with the teaser rates and then they were gonna have the 12% uh, interest rate to come, they never expected they were gonna pay 12%. And the banks, by the way, never expected that they'd get the 12%. The whole purpose of this was to force the person to refinance in three or four years uh, when hopefully real estate prices would go up. Uh, it's a little bit like what happened with the auction market, uh, for auction securities market. Again, the sort of the penalty rates. And uh, their failure to really anticipate what would happen in the event that they couldn't refinance created a situation where there was no escape. And it got worse because those securities were chopped up into I don't know, 20 pieces in these very complicated pools where one person gets paid first, another person gets paid second. And so you've got a homeowner who's willing to go ahead and uh, pay some amount and not pay the 12% that nobody thought, but there's nobody to renegotiate with because you'd have to get 20 different people's agreements. And the problem is any one person who says, well, excuse me, you need my agreement, you got to pay me something for it. And by the time, so one of the things that game theory says is that when there are 20 people who all have to say yes to get something done, the chances of getting something done easily and quickly are, are pretty darn difficult.